If this were to be our last conversation, what is something you never want me to forget? I try to make sure that I tell you everything because you never know what's gonna happen. Um, but that I love you. Oh my gosh, I'm getting emotional. No. No one ever wants to think of their last conversation. Um, but that I love you and you've loved me. And we've had an incredible life together. Yeah. And you. Um, I un, uh, unreservedly love you. Yeah. And I feel you're worthy of everything that you've done and then some. Um, you are phenomenal. There's nothing you can't do. There's no obstacle too big for you. There's no valley too low for you. There's nothing that is greater than you. Um, and I would love for you to see you that way as much as I see you that way. Same here. Was that that one? That was this one. Um, <laughs> when were you most in love with me? Oh, wow. Be real. Uh, what time is it now? <laughs> um, I'll, one of the things that has I feel brought us closer are the few deaths that we've had in our families um, and in our friend circles and such. And there have been times when we've faced those deaths that you've been just extremely um, open to allow me to just be vulnerable. Hmm. And I think that's, I think that those times are times when I'm like the most in love with you because it's not, you're not requiring me to be husband, male, man, macho. You just let me be little boy kid that needs a hug, needs to cry, needs to do whatever. And that has been super valuable. And I think in those times I'm like, man, she's amazing. Yeah. Interesting. How about you? I would have to say, when you just do what needs to be done. You know my love language, so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you just, yeah, when you see something and it needs to be taken care of and you take care of it, that's when like my love tank is full. Like, <laughs> I like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. What is the pain in me you wish you could heal? Mm. <laughs> failure. Success, failure. Yeah. And um, that's one. And then the other one is just the relationship with the kids. I think that's the biggest one. Yeah. I think they're somewhat tied to each other. Mm. Yeah. Crazy, but they are. <laughs> but yeah, the biggest one would be the kids. Yeah. And me? Um, so, your life, there have been different things that have happened that have made you guarded in some respects and um, open in other respects. And I think if I could go back in time and like give you a different childhood, mm. 
where, you know, your mom didn't do certain things or if there were people I could keep alive for you. Um, the void that was left by some of those people um, caused you to accept certain things early on that you didn't necessarily have to or even truly want to. Mm -hmm. um, there's a point where the love that you have for you, I would have, I would encourage more. Um, Cause I've seen you put yourself in positions where in trying to love someone else, mm -hmm. um, whether friends or the family, you go a, a pretty far distance out of your way mm -hmm. to make sure that they are comforted, they are put at ease um, in situations where <laughs> I just say screw you and call it a day, but yeah. you, you don't do that. And the pain that's tied to some of those situations, mm -hmm. I would stop that or change yeah. that or step in and cuss somebody out on your behalf. <laughs> just have a conversation with them. <laughs> a very aggressive conversation. I'll say that. Yeah. Nice. Is it me? Yes. <clears throat> What are you hesitant to talk to me about? Mm. I guess the feelings of failure. Um, I don't really talk about those much. Um, I guess when things don't go right in certain scenarios, we talk about those because they're openly obvious. But when I have like just self personal failures and things that don't go right. I don't talk about it much. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. How about you? What are you hesitant to talk about? <laughs> mm, I think the biggest thing I was hesitant to talk to you about, I shared with you. I think the other thing that I'm hesitant to share with you or to say to you, um, and it may come out in my actions, is when you make the bad decisions. <laughs> You're very much a risk taker <laughs> and it, it it's good sometimes, but then sometimes I'm like, what are you thinking? So yeah, yeah, I try to let you do you, be you. And then what I, what I, what I do is I'll talk to God instead of saying it to you because I don't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> so yeah, those are the things I, I think I keep in the most. Time continues to reveal. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Let's see here. <laughs> when have you felt the sexiest around me? And what did that teach you about yourself? Ooh. So my first thought was bedtime but I think it's well it's still that time it's still you know bedtime but it was um recently when I was it was I was dancing at night <laughs> I know you were like at first you were like what are you doing <laughs> but it was me trying to get into this like space of peace and just release and the way you look at me there is this like look you give and I remember in the beginning you would give this look and I would go what and I don't remember who it was that said when your husband or your man says what just know that he's looking at you like that's mine she looks good so receive it and I had to start you know receiving it receiving it <laughs> so I would say um yeah when you give me the looks Growing up, I think a lot of women think that they have to look a certain way, dress a certain way, or even act a certain way. And you looking at me in my, I'm just in the house, please don't let anyone knock on the door at this point. <laughs> and looking at me with this look of, I love her, she looks beautiful, or you'll come kiss me. It's taught me that it's not about the outer appearance at all. Um, 
yeah, people love you for who you are. And they're attracted to you for who you are. So just be you. Say it again. Good mm -hmm. job. I don't remember. <laughs> When was the last time, Douglas? <laughs> uh oh. Now, when was the last time you considered ending this relationship and why didn't you? Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, geez. I'm trying to remember the year. I'll go this route. I'll say maybe year. Two, three, somewhere in there. Um, and I didn't feel, I did not end it because I didn't feel like we were done. Originally, we were two separate people traveling mm -hmm. and then beginning to travel in the same direction. And then we came together and we were one person together traveling in the same direction. Yeah. Now, being married, marriage is no joke and it's not easy. So you have these moments sometimes. I'll be honest. I've had moments sometimes where I'm like, are we really about to do this? We're we really going down this path. Are we getting deeper into this? Is this, you know, I've, I've had those thoughts because we'll have a disagreement about something. But then I realize, like, OK, it's just not that serious. <laughs> yeah. And I think that might be the selfish part that's in me because I was my own person before you. Mm -hmm. And so I don't really ever consider you not being a part of my life. I just want to be the best. Yeah. Yeah. You're not a, you know, no, no one's perfect, but you do. Um, for me, you come very close to that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, it's Ashika here from The Skin Deep. Thank you so much for being here and watching this conversation. If you want to have more meaningful conversations like this at home, some of our best questions are in this card game right here. To check it out, go to shop.theskindeep.com. Thank you.